Hello everyone, welcome to another look into genre from us here at No Input. My name is Vanessa and today I'll be talking about the ever-present genre of film at this time of the year. Of course, it's Christmas, and with all its festive cheer and good wishes, film has brought upon itself its own unique genre. Also, if you enjoy our content, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and turn on that notification bell. Let's get started. We all already know what defines a Christmas movie. The brightly lit trees, the feasts at the dinner table, the presents, the snow, the competitions to have the best lit houses in the neighborhood, you name it. Yes, they are all obvious characteristics of a Christmas film. But not all Christmas films are evident. After all, Die Hard is hardly a Christmas film, especially when you take into consideration that it's set in a commercial building in sunny Los Angeles, or even the fact that Christmas is barely mentioned in the film. In fact, it's probably only mentioned a few times because the main crux of the film is focused on the conflict in the building. So what really defines a Christmas film? First, let me ask you this. What emotions do you associate with Christmas? When you hear the word Christmas or Yuletide, what feelings come to mind? If the words nostalgia, romance, joy come to mind, you're bang on the money. Alternatively, you'll also find the words irritation, annoyance and stress come to mind too. All of these emotions are actually the concepts that are deeply embedded in Christmas films. Let's take a look at Die Hard again. While it's a typical action thriller, we know it's a Christmas movie not just because it was released around that time, and not just because of the props and settings of the film. We know it's a Christmas movie because of the concept behind it too. If you've noticed, the whole reason John McClane went to Los Angeles in the first place is because he wanted to patch things up with his family. His children are living with his estranged wife who was decidedly angry at him since he wasn't willing to move with her because of his job as a detective with the NYPD. And if he hadn't tried in the first place, she might have wanted a divorce. Only John can drive somebody that crazy. If you take away the hostile takeover, the terrorists and the almost impossible situation, you'll find that at its very core, it's a family romance. One that's based on the trust and love between a husband and wife who only remember their love for each other because of the Christmas season. You see, if McLean hadn't gone to Los Angeles, his wife would have died in that building, and their family's Christmas would have ended in tragedy. However, that would have gone against the entire Christmas season, and in all essence, Christmas is a time for reconciliation. So what better to reconcile a broken family than with a hostage takeover, right? Now let's compare that with an obvious Christmas movie, like The Santa Claus. Of course, while this might not be a romance, it is still about family, and how although Scott Calvin's family is broken, he still manages to repair the bond between him and his son, Charlie, thanks to the magic of Christmas and his new job as Santa Claus. You ready to go, Sport? Can't catch you, Dad. Now dash her, now dance her, now press her and fix it. It's very apparent, and you can even see that his relationship with his ex-wife and her husband has also become less strained because of his newfound respect for the jolly icon and his role in people's lives. By taking up the mantle of Father Christmas and his responsibilities, Scott finally understands that the only thing that was keeping him from being the father he was meant to be was himself. Because of the responsibilities Santa has to kids all around the world, he finally comes to terms with the fact that his own selfishness and pride were holding him back from really listening to the problems Charlie was having, even though he wasn't talking about it. When he does finally start listening to his son, Scott then grows into someone who can really appreciate the family he has, even though their situation ends up being a little more unusual than what most families would experience. Okay, I could go on and on about the many different films that make up the Christmas genre, but you already get the idea. A Christmas film isn't just defined by the season the film is set in, or even the season it was released. A Christmas film is all about the concept of nostalgia and the emotions that surround it. After all, Frozen was deemed a Christmas movie, despite the fact that it has nothing to do with Christmas, nor was it set during the season. 
It was a film all about summer and the bond between two sisters who needed to learn how to understand each other and support each other when they're going through a rough time. You could even classify the films for the Chronicles of Narnia series as Christmas films because they are all about the love the Pevensey children have for each other. After all, it was thanks to Edmund's misguided trust that they even became kings and queens of Narnia in the first place. So, in essence, a film becomes a Christmas film not just because of the time and place it was set in, but because of the concepts that they are based on. As I said before, Christmas is a time for reconciliation, when kids are on their best behaviours, when all the hurt and pride adults felt throughout the year get put aside. It's a time where old wounds are healed, because it's a season all about forgiveness and being kind and charitable to one another. So the next time you watch a film, think about the deeper concepts behind it and ask yourselves, is it about forgiveness? Is it about reconciliation? Do I feel nostalgic when I watch it? If your answers are yes, then you, my friend, are watching a Christmas film. Well, there you have it, our last video essay for this year. I hope you've learned a little more about film production and what makes it such a great medium for storytelling. Let us know in the comments below what your favorite Christmas film is. Personally, I absolutely love Barbie and the Nutcracker at this time of year. I watched it as a child and I will watch it every year at Christmas because of the nostalgia I feel when I watch it. And for me, it's just so traditionally Christmas. I mean, it's got gingerbread, nutcrackers and ballet. What more can you ask? Thanks for watching and have yourself a very Merry Christmas and a wonderful New Year. Oh, and don't forget to keep tuned for more content from us here at No Input. Bye.